that Susie Dent is here, because while she's here with us, she's not writing another one of her books. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's more of a product launch, Jimmy. I've actually written a book. Have you? Yeah. Oh. Not a proper one, because it takes ages. So I've done a kid's one. <laughs> so uh, I've written my own superhero called Super Dad. Um, <laughs> <and that laughs> Super Dad there. Um, he's balding. So what? And no one said anything, John. He's still <laughs> happy. <laughs> but so it's just, it's just... over this side of the table. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us went with the programme. <laughs> <laughs> Have you met Christmas Future? <laughs> <laughs> So Super Dad is a dad that sort of saves the world. Dadversaries. Daddy saved the world again today. Daddy says the greatest threat to all our lives isn't a massive lizard, it's climate change. <laughs> yeah, you've got to educate him. Uh, cycling and recycling are better weapons than lasers. Yeah. yeah. So, it's good, isn't it? Because a lot of children's books are quite exciting these days, but this one... Yeah, yeah. tone it down. Yeah, yeah. These kids are inheriting an awful planet, so let's tone down their excitement about what they might achieve or whether they might ever be happy. Um, <laughs> um, Dadmin. I was almost really badly injured again today, but Daddy saved me. Daddy says, by the time you need to be saved, it's already too late! <laughs> the best way to avoid accidents is not to do dangerous things. <laughs> so we do a full risk assessment of every trip to the park. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, there is at the back, if your kid's still awake, that's a full risk assessment. <laughs> if I'm there honest with you, this, sounds, this looks like a book that you would let children read so you could assess how much social services they need in their <laughs> life. <laughs> Super dad is the social services. Risk of disorientation. Everyone loves a roundabout. What about the risks? <laughs> Bolt it down. I would do. Somewhere I had my padlock from the park last week. <laughs> Super dad, John Richardson there. <laughs> Susie Dent's written 14 books all about the meanings of words and phrases. She's like the J.K. Rowling of lexicography if J.K. Rowling had written 14 boring books that no one wanted to read. <laughs> OK, um, you've been working on a book about the differences between men and women when it comes to language. What have, what have you found out? Uh, well, yeah, hoping to write it with Jo Brand. So Jo being Jo, she's got me looking at various things, including penises in English. <laughs> and there are about 1,300 slang terms for the penis. Quite a lot of them. I think it's something like 500 big ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they're weirdly specific as well, so size has always mattered. So, in, I think, around the 1700s, there was something called a Rantalian, which is a name for a man, but it was also based on uh, someone whose scrotum is longer than their penis. And it's described as whose shop bag is longer than their pouch. <laughs> <laughs> Very easy way to turn a dollar is kids' books. They're all at it, everyone's yeah. at it, you know, and uh, I had a successful bash at it with my, um, uh, the tiger who uh, went for a pint. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I thought, I'm going to get into the kids' book market, it's easy, it's a piece of piss. Yeah. <laughs> um, I reckon I can write them quicker than they can read them. <laughs> <laughs> That's how easy it is. So I thought we've got Postman Pat, we've got Fireman Sam, we've got Bob the Builder. Time for a prison guard. <laughs> <laughs> Right, created <laughs> Cyril the Screw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's, he's very good. He's good, isn't he? There he is, there's Cyril. There Cyril he is. And I'm going to read you the story of Cyril the Screw. That's lovely. This is Cyril. He's a prison officer. He likes his job. He drives his prison van from the court to jail. And he's very proud of his prison van. <laughs> Cyril's best friend is a spider called Frank. <laughs> Frank goes round the van, listening to the prisoners. Must stop being so naughty. <laughs> Blooming DNA. <laughs> <laughs> As Cyril drives the naughty people to prison, he likes to point out places that might be of interest. Look, lads, at the Red Lion, you can have a pie and a pint for £5.75. <laughs> well, I can. <laughs> <laughs> One day, he saw that Mrs Boggins, the postmistress, was waving at him from the side of the road. Her car had broken down. I'd better pull over and help her, he thought. But it wasn't Mrs Boggins, was it? <laughs> no, she was tied up in the boot. <laughs> it was one of the gang with a wig on. As soon as Cyril got out of the van, 
they punched him so hard he landed upside down in a blackberry bush. <laughs> His little legs wiggling to get free. <laughs> they jumped into the van and drove off with all the prisoners cheering. But Frank, the clever spider, crawled into the back of the sat-nav and it took them to prison anyway. <laughs> I mean, the merchandise for that alone. <laughs> Never need to work again. Susie yeah. likes her books like she likes her men, lined up next to each other and preferably covered in leather. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, what have you been up to lately? Well, you're kind to feign interest. I am... Um, I've written a children's book. Do you want to see the cover? I would love to see the cover. Look at this. Go on, what's, what's, what's that? The book that no one wanted to read. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's a preemptive strike on critics. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's, it's an absolute triumph. That's a genuine book. Yeah, this, is, this isn't a prop. <laughs> this is all sales, this bit. There's no jokes here. Really? You, I can't work out if you're joking or not. <laughs> Why would it be Why joking? Why have you not got any pages? <laughs> OK. OK, so what, what's the book about, Richard? The book is about... It's, it's the first book to have been written by a book. The main character is a book. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand what a book has written the book about a book that no one wants to read. That's what it's hilarious. You can see why you haven't bothered to write it yet. <laughs> written. This is a sale. You don't. Have you seen a poster before? It's not got the whole film behind it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's so hard about the concept of a well, picture? Because they usually have Just, pages. Do you look book. at pictures of people you know and go, "That's not the person. It's 2D." <laughs> I don't know if you've seen a lot of Jimmy's work, but we don't get a lot of kids watching. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a fun fact. If someone buys a Susie Dent book, they automatically get a call from the Samaritans. <laughs> <laughs> there comes a time for all comedians at some point to accept their fate and step back from the dog-eat-dog -dog world of adult entertainment. I am writing a children's story. So, having had a child, I've looked into what kids like and I commissioned studies to try and find a character kids could really relate to, something brand new, something they'd never seen before. <laughs> and I've written this book called Salty Sow. <laughs> which <laughs> is an entirely brand new character I've come up with. <laughs> My studies came back and said kids like pigs with names that sound like they've been seasoned. <laughs> So... Salty sow, you yeah. Salty sow. Independently. Totally brand new. Do you think of any other seasonings <laughs> for it? Um, there's a uh, Horseradish Harry <laughs> is another character <laughs> in the... Um, and obviously when we go global, mm. there's Wasabi Willie. Piri <laughs> <laughs> Piri Pete. <laughs> um, this is for the UK market, Salty Sow. I've modelled the father on myself. Um, <laughs> I find that what you don't realise until your kids start watching these programmes is how heavily their behaviour is influenced by the characters they see on telly. So my daughter learned no and pushing something away from these little pricks. <laughs> um, so this is a book all about sort of positive role models for kids. So uh, this, is a, this is a classic uh, story. It starts out on the couch. Look at that chaos there. <laughs> Salty Sow is sitting quietly with Daddy Sow. Are we going to have fun, Daddy? Yes, we are, Salty. We're going to re-alphabetise your books. <laughs> We're going to have a cracking afternoon. Is that all, Daddy? No. We're going to be even more fun than that. We're going to go around your bedroom, <laughs> noticing how storage efficiency can be improved. <laughs> um, what shall we do after we've sorted the new storage solutions, Daddy? Well, we'll celebrate downstairs with a glass of water and a dry cracker. <laughs> Um, my issue with a lot of these kids' stories is um, the way they end. So what happens in most of these? Someone says something mildly amusing and they all fall on the floor and laugh at the same time, which, as one of this country's leading comedians, I've got to tell you, has very rarely happened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm this funny 24-7, and I'll be honest, my wife, if she rolls around on the floor, she's very rarely with laughter. Mostly, it's a more sort of hair pulling, how has my life become this way experience. Well, you are yeah, uh... trying for another, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Wife? Um... <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if I was the one that left? No, no. She's <laughs> <laughs> 
so obviously with with salty being a pig if you flick to the end at these end a little bit more graphically and at the end of every episode they're <laughs> killed and eaten <laughs> um, so she's saying there, daddy why are we in a sandwich and he's saying because salty there are some still eat meat welcome to the world <laughs>